this has got to be the biggest update to WordPress. So many changes, so many improvements. And check this out. There's even a new default WordPress thing that's coming out with all these really cool style variations that you can apply to change everything in just one click. And did you see this here in the top left corner? Yeah, that's going to be a big change for every website as well. It no longer has the WordPress logo. There are so many things in this update. I'm going to try to go over all of them. You want to stay to the very end. There's there's new features. There's the UI that you normally interact with. It's changed. Things have moved. There's speed improvements. I'm going to cover as much as I can and as fast as I can. And we're going to get started right now. Firstly, you already saw it. There's a brand new default theme, the 2023 theme. It's a full site editing theme. And you can see one of the really neat things is these predefined styles. No doubt this is really cool to be able to change the entire style of your website simply by clicking the style that you want. So I think out of all these, I like this one the most. I like the color of the background. All you have to do is click on save and then save again. Now visit the front of the site and you can see the style of the entire site has been updated. Now I know that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. People aren't really ready to jump into these full site editing themes, but don't worry. There's a ton in this WordPress update, even if you're not using one of those themes. First up is fluid topography and fluid spacing. Essentially what this is, is if someone's making a theme, they can define the minimum size of a font and the maximum size of a font. And as the device window shrinks, it will automatically start adjusting. This is much better than how it's currently done. And it's going to make for better responsive sites. Now let's go over the improvements in the block editor. Most of the core default blocks are going to be getting the this new dimension controls for margin and padding. So I've clicked on a block and you can see right here, it says dimensions. Now this is interesting. There's this kind of like slider way of doing things like this. But if you're old school like me, you could just click on this and get precise measurements, or you can click on this icon right here and you can specifically set the margin and padding for the different dimensions for top, right, bottom, or left. And for each of these, you can click on this icon and you could just set it as a specific pixel value. Also with that, if you see down here, most blocks are getting border controls, brand new border controls. So you see two controls here. One of them's the border itself and the other one's for a radius. If you want to round out the corners, this is going to be really nice with images. So I'll click on this image and you can see I was actually already playing around with it. Let's go ahead and get it to the default view right here. So here you can set the border width very easily, or if you wanted to get it specifically set for different corners. You could easily do it like this as well as set colors for each of the corners so people can get themselves in the trouble or have lots of fun. Uh, let's go ahead and unify all the colors like that. And then you also have the radius. So if you want to round out those corners, you could do it like this. And if you just wanted to round out certain corners, you can easily expose all the controls like this. And you can see it's only rounded there in the top right corner. Another new improvement is with the cover block. Let's go ahead and insert that. Here it is. I'll click on it. It gets added. And what's really neat is there's some dynamic features being added to it. So for the background, if I wanted an image, I can click this button right here and it will just automatically use the featured image that is inside of this post. There are also some nice improvements to the default list block. Let's go ahead and throw that down. So we have the list block here. Let's put some content. I've added a few list points. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like here. So we have this parent group right here for some styling, but each of the individual list items, you could do things like make it uh, re be rearranged like that. You can also indent the individual items like this. Now let's go over the full site editing experience changes. And what's neat with this new version of WordPress is everything theme and everyone is invited to the full site editing party. Let me show you. If your WordPress theme wants to implement this, they can easily do that. So I've gone ahead and it's a little techie and I put the code together to 
to turn the Astra theme into a block based theme with different template parts. So it's a little snippet of code I had to add and I put it in a child theme. Let's go ahead and activate this right here. So once I activate it, now this is my live theme. You could see there's this option here that says template parts. And when you click in it, I can click right here and I can design the themes, the website's footer using the full site editing experience. I wouldn't hold your breath on the theme that you use to implement this. I'm sure a lot of theme developers are easing their way into this, but I was able to accomplish this with a few snippets of custom code and it was very easy. What else is new is a vastly expanded list of custom template types. So now if you have a custom post type on your site, you can click add new in the top right and you'll see it listed here and you can make a custom template for that custom post type that you've created on your site. But you can see now there's options here for tags, taxonomies, single items, categories. Some of this was there, but it has been greatly expanded. So now if I wanted to create a custom post type, with some custom fields, I could go into the full site editor here and I can create a custom designed page template for it. Also what's new is this last option here where you can have a custom template apply to a single post. So it doesn't have to apply to all of your posts. So think about this like blog posts. You can have a different template that applies to just a single post if you wanted versus all of your posts. This too is new. Also, there's a bunch of improvements to the menu block right here. So if you're like me and you like to use old school menus, when you click on it, I can click right here and create a new menu or manage a menu. And this is actually what kind of throws me through a loop. When I click on manage menus, it's going to try to take me out of here to where I can create a menu but this used to be listed under appearance on my site, but for some reason now I can go here and I can create a menu, but this page itself is not linked anywhere on this website. It's little things like this that make me say and have this sentiment that full site editing is not yet ready for all users. Now let's go through some of the random changes that you're gonna experience in the user interface on your website. There's big changes right here, and this is on every page and post. It's this thing here that says summary. So before, if you wanted to change the link that goes to the page you're on, there would be a menu that you could expand here for the permalink to make that change. But now it's been folded up into the summary right here where it says URL. I personally think this makes way more sense. Now also, if you're using page templates on your site, that as well was moved from here to right here where it says templates. So if I wanted to use a different kind of uh, template style, if my theme provides it, I would click right here here and then I would have a list of them right there and then if I wanted to change that link to this page the URL I could click right here and I can change it right here or click here to actually be taken to the page the next change is up here in this area of the top right there used to be a link that said preview and now they got rid of the pre and it's simply view so when I click on this I get those same options, but it no longer says preview. Now it just says view. Next, there's some new preference options and you could get to those by clicking on these three dots, going down here to preferences. And it's going to be these two right here where it says always open list view. So that means when I go into a page or a post, it's automatically gonna have this list view open. I like that. I don't think it goes far enough. I would prefer if I could have an option for this always to be showing unless I explicitly disable it. I kind of find that as like a little annoyance using the block editor, this panels appearing and disappearing. The other option is called show button text labels. So when you toggle this on, you can see up here, it turned to text labels. So everything's now text labels. I prefer the icons myself because I've gotten used to them. Next, if you click on the little I right here, the letter I, it's gonna have a new time to read reading here inside of this information on the post that you're on. So if you're writing a blog, long blog post, you'll be able to see how long it should take someone to read that blog post. And then I don't know if you noticed it right here, this is normally the WordPress logo. Instead, it's showing your website's site icon if you have set one. If you haven't, it will show the WordPress logo. 
and when you hover over it to click, it kind of grows and then shrinks. I actually like this, but then I don't like this because it's gonna make everyone's editor just a little different, a little inconsistent. So especially for tutorial videos, I would say, oh, click on the WordPress logo on the top left, but now that's not the same. It's just gonna be the site icons logo. If you're using a typical WordPress theme, that setting can usually be found inside of the customizer. If you're using full site editing, that is found inside of the header that you've created for your site. Now there's two new site health checks regarding object caching. The reason you wanna know this is because if you have clients and you give them the site and they're inside of the site health, they will get alarmed, they might get confused. So that is found underneath tools. Right here it says health check. And you can see right now, did you see it just added this one and it's going to give you some information if you expand it. So let's go ahead and open these up. And then there's the more alarming one is right here. So this right here is telling me to use a persistent object cache. This one actually has a reading and it's your server's response time. So that's why this one appeared a second or two after I got on the page. It was actually doing a reading of my server's response time. You can see right here, 85 milliseconds. And it's recommending that this be under 600 milliseconds. So if you're not using quality hosting and this says like 700 or 800, your client's gonna go in here and say, uh oh, there's something going on here. Now the last bit of improvements I just have to explain, I'm not gonna be able to show you. And so essentially what it revolves around is performance. So whenever anyone visits a page on your website, what ends up happening is a request is made to a database and then the database responds and says, oh, okay, here's the content for that homepage or blog post or whatever. That's called a query. Now, usually with web hosting, the speed bottleneck, the speed problem is how long it takes to make that query and actually get the data back. So this update of WordPress is going to introduce caching of that query. So the next time someone visits that same page, that query does not need to go and ask the database, okay, what's in this blog post? It will have cached that so it can basically eliminate that query to the database. And since that problem of querying or that process of querying the database is what makes most websites slow, this is gonna bring a speed improvement to all WordPress sites that go on WordPress 6.1. Now, how much of an improvement? It's gonna depend on the hosting you use. If you use that kind of super low end, super budget hosting that has problems, you're gonna see a really nice improvement. But if you're using quality hosting and the hosting company knows what they're doing and it's like really high quality, you're probably not gonna like visibly notice it even though an improvement will be present. So I'm excited about the speed improvements. So in summary, that is WordPress 6.1. Here's the page that's gonna show when you update. It's gonna cover the 10 new styles of the default theme. It's gonna cover some of the enhancements to the full site editor. For the blocks that I mentioned, the new dimensions and border controls, the menus improvements, some of the changes to the UI that you can see right here, as well as the fluid top topography, the improvements to some of the blocks, as well as some other odds and ends that you're gonna see here. I'm gonna make a quick prediction. A lot of people ask about full site editing. My prediction for full site editing is it's gonna have a lot of improvements in 2023 next year. And in 2024, finally, we're gonna see some adoption of block themes that are using this full site editing experience. Right now, it's super techy and super complicated, and I don't think it's really made for a user, but I would love to see, and I really believe it's gonna to get to a point where it's gonna be easy for the actual end user to go in and use. So I'm fairly certain that next year, some of my own websites, I'm going to experiment with full site editing and a theme that has full site editing so I can learn how to get the most out of it because I think it's gonna provide the most lean, best experience in the future for all WordPress websites. And there it is, WordPress 6.1. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. You should give this video some love, give it a thumbs up and share it around on social media. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.